I got you in a special location. Ooh, let's see if you can figure this out. All right, here's the riddle. Early settlers back in 1848 and 1849 came through this way in Nevada on their way out to the gold fields. And they stopped in a particular spot to rest for the evening. Well, somebody got a good idea to, hey, while I'm here, why don't I sample pan the area? And he found gold. And it's reported that that's the first gold find in Nevada and the first settlement. Let's see if you can figure that out, boy. Leave a comment down below. Anyway, so when they found gold, guess where they went? That's right, they started running up this creek. Ooh, and there's still water in it. And little fish. And a whole lot of wind. And I just saw two huge eagles or hawks fly by, making noise at me. Anyway, look at this. You imagine what it was like back in the old days, running through here, huh? Look at that. Oh, I can just smell the gold. Anyway, so long story short, they ran up this canyon and they kept following the gold because that's what you're supposed to do. Remember I told you about that. You find gold, you want to find the source. Follow it up until it stops. Anyway, the story has it. They chased this all the way up to the top of the ridge there and that's when they found the source. And a whole lot of gold that came with it and they started doing hard rock mining after that to get down in the ground where it was coming from. About the same time on the other side of that ridge, two men were tapping into the mother load when a third man, Henry P, and the P stands for Pancake Comstock, wandered up on them, and the rest is history. The world's greatest gold and silver find. Woo, yeah! Now, in case you haven't figured it out, the little town is called Dayton. And there's a lot of people that are gonna argue with me, but Dayton was the first established settlement in Nevada. Ooh, what you fancy there, boy, huh? Why don't you step on into my compadre's cantina and get yourself some tequila and some vases too. I got it all. And if that don't do it for you, ooh, I can whip you up some of my world-class famous eggs and beans, cowboy style. It might give you a bad case of mud butt. Ooh, but it hits the spot. Hey, Jose, what am I gonna say? Hey, senor, which way? Go cantina, dude. So come on. I don't know how to speak Espanol. Let's go. Ooh, look at that. The stream comes right up to what? Oh, you know what these are. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Big old covert pipes. Hello. Gold. Somebody's sampling in there too. You see that? These are good places for gold because the covert pipe, these act as riffles in a sluice box and they'll catch the gold. Best place to look is at the head, not the tail. Come on now. Don't say nothing, boy. Just drop those pants. I don't hear no banjos in there, so it should be safe. Ooh, look what I see. Somebody's been working their hiney to get this shiny. See where they've cleaned off all this bedrock? Ooh, and you see the color of the bedrock? You know what that means, don't you, boy? Oh, that is altered andesite. It's been altered by hydrothermal fluids. But they're not going for load gold, boy. They're going for that placer gold that was deposited here. And if they're gonna find gold, this is a good spot. Because during flood stages or back during the time of deposition, this would have been a perfect place for the gold to drop out in these little cracks and crannies. Even way up here looking, looking for any sources of gold. Because the gold could have been up here on these benches a long time ago. Go over and take a look. Hey, more road apples. I'm getting a little bit hungry. Gotta get me one. Well, did you figure it out? Huh, did you, boy? That is where all this goes to. Gold Canyon! Woo, yeah! And like the sign says, they found tons of gold here. They found the source, and it's associated with Comstock load. I told you that. Woo, and in the background over here behind the sign is what? That's the New York mine up on the hill. It's got a Kimberly on it. Kimberly's an automatic dumping system. 
Ooh, they were punching in trying to find the source of all the gold that was fading into Gold Canyon. And they found it. And they've been mining it forever. In fact, they've mining it up almost up to this day. They tore sides of the mountain off. How would you like to go up there and do a little explore with me, boy? Huh? How does that sound? Well, if you do, you better smash that like button, boy. Smash it hard. Harder than that. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? You know what I'm going to say? So come on. Let's go! Wow, look at all these dredge piles. They're everywhere and they're enormous. Can you imagine all the gold they got out of here? Holy cow, and there's quartz everywhere. And big old pieces of quartz in there too. And you can see Gold Canyon at the very top. Is it any wonder they dredged this whole section? Ooh, got tons, and there's still gold here too. Ooh, they're, they're smelling in me bone. Ooh, look at that pegmatitic quartz. Look at that. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah. And of course, you're always gonna see what out here? Wild horses. That's right. They're everywhere. You got mustangs out here too a lot. You probably heard about that. Well, just to give you an idea what that looks like, take a look at this boy. What do you think? Should I try to hop on one and ride him, boy? Huh? Wouldn't that be fun? You guys wanna go for a ride? I don't think he wants me to ride him. What do you think, boy? Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think about that. Very nice. Hey, what's coming out the back of that? Are those road apples I see? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet you're hungry too. Look like you need something to eat. I got some uh, cowboy style beans and eggs if you want some. Doesn't that sound good? Some cowboy style beans and eggs? I know you like it. It might give you a bad case of mud butt, but I'll tell you what, it hits the spot. <laughs> Oh, look at that baby boy. Look at that baby boy. <laughs> You're a good looking horse. Yes, you are. Oh, hey, where you going? Wow, look at the main shaft of the Union Mine. Of course, it's all plugged up now. Here's the hoisting works right here. Look at the size of these bolts. Now that's a bolt, son of boy. Look at that. Ooh, and there's where the pump house was over there. It's huge! This is where the main hoisting drum sat, right here. This thing is a monster. This is the Union Mine. We're on the very northern end of the load, on the east side of the uh, Comstock. Look at the size of the bolts they used to hold it down. Jeez! Rawr. Of course, back in World War One and World War Two. The scrappers came through here and they took everything, anything that was metal. They would bring in their, their torches and they'd cut everything. And then of course they used it for the war effort because they needed metal. Come on, Sonny boy, you know that. So that's why you don't see anything anymore. This shaft drops down 2,800 feet and it connects the Sierra Nevada and the Mexican mine together at the 1,600 foot level. And then from there it runs over to the rest of the mines and then connects to the Sutro. But this is the main shaft. now. What they would do, they'd plug these things up by dumping cars into them. And that way uh, people wouldn't fall into them because that's a long ways to fall. But yeah, that's the main shaft down there. You can see where they had it gated off. So one of the reasons I brought you over here is because we're going to talk a little geology in case you don't know about this area. And I'm going to show you something that you've probably seen in photos before, but you couldn't figure out where it was. Ooh, so you know what I'm gonna say, boy. Just drop those pants. No, so come on, let's go. All right, why am I bringing you here? Well, you'll notice there's a slot that goes down 30 feet. Now, what's so important about this big old slot? This is where they had the world's largest Cornish pump brought in. They had a 40 foot flywheel on that thing. You imagine that, 40 foot? Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, and that's the popular photo you see all the time when you look at the Comstock load, is that big old 40 foot flywheel with a man like me standing next to the hub. Of course, the main shaft was over there and had, they had the big arm on it that pivoted over those gigantic bolts over there. And it would rock back and forth, back and forth. It'd bring water up from the 2,500 foot level. You imagine this thing putting it together? It's huge, look at the size of these bolts. 
and the nut on there. Look at that. Oh man, it's the size of two of my fists. It's gigantic. You can see where they come through with torches and cut these things off, trying to get the metal. Ooh. Let's go down inside and take a look. Yeah. Ooh, look at this. This is the very face of the main shaft. And this is how they would support the collars is with these big old blocks of andesite and trachyte. Look at that. Until they got down to solid rock. Like I said, the main shaft is right over there. Ooh, this thing drops down close to 3,000 feet. Right here. <sighs> Look at that. The hoisting works up there. And this is the main shaft. Look at that. Wow, look at that. And that's where that 40-foot flywheel sat. Incredible. See how everything's made out of this quarried stone? A lot of it, the upper one is granite that comes from outside of Carson. And the other is andesite. Look at that. That's just amazing. Look at the size of these bolts. Look at that. Huge bolts down here. And they still have some steel rope. They don't call it cable, they call it steel rope. Look at the size of that, that's huge. That is huge. Now look at this, I wanna show you how they anchored it. All right, see how they got the railroad track in here? And then these are the very bottom of those bolts that you see at the very top. This is how they would anchor them in. See how they're tied in? The track there's another one there here's a better example right here see that huge monkers and you can see where they bored through the rock and they go all the way up that way this thing is anchored in tight man that's huge and the interesting thing is this is all built on top of the mine dump so they had to dig out first put the mine dump here then build from the bottom here up and then backfill with mine dump to create a top on this. And then that way they would build a floor to the shop. And that's what you see in the photos. So this was built first and then they would backfill around it. Man, I tell you what, they were tough as nails back then, I tell you. Wow, this is amazing. Just the amount of work that goes into building this thing. It's just unbelievable. All right, let's talk geology because I know that's what you want to hear. All right, so this entire deposit we're sitting on is called an epithermal deposit, bonanza type. Now, here at the Comstock Lode, which was named after Henry P. Comstock, basically you have this huge fault that runs seven miles long and 4,000 feet deep, and it has a dip of about maybe 60 degrees. And you have andesite as your hanging wall, and you have granite diorite as your foot wall. And what has happened is, is over millions of years, the two have moved across both like this, and it has basically crushed all the material in between, like fault gouge. And because of all the volcanic activity in the area, you get a lot of hot spring, hydrothermal waters. And what they do is they find the path of least resistance, which is gonna be these faults. So all the material that's been ground up in between that fault has had hydrothermal fluids come up from down below because there's a fault system here. And of course, there's volcanic activity in this area too, so it's a perfect combination. Well, the, the hydrothermal fluids acted as a mobilizer for all the, the fine particles of gold and silver that were crushed up in that fault gouge. A process called argillic alteration is altering or transporting or mobilizing the small particles of gold that are trapped into this crushed material. And you get this argillic clay out of it. That's why a lot of the mine dumps here are, are kind of a yellowish color and they're really soft like a clay, especially when it gets wet. And as it does so, it's gonna transport that gold and silver redeposit it through a process called secondary enrichment. And as it does so, the gold drops out of solution based off of temperature and pressure and boiling, all these factors, pH balance. They start to precipitate out into these pods. There's no rhyme or reason as to where they're at. So the miners had to go looking for them. And some mines would drop shafts down 3,000 feet and find nothing. Other mines would drop shafts down maybe a few hundred feet and hit the mother load. CNC shaft hit a huge bonanza. And of course the gold, that's in here is, is referred to as electrum. It has over 20% silver alloyed with it. So the gold doesn't look like buttery gold. It's got more of a silver hue to it. 
And you'll see that when you see pictures of the gold ore. And of course you got sulfides down there as well, which is just part of the process. So that's the Comstock load in a nutshell. I know I left a lot out, but that's the basics of it. And that type of gold is found a lot in epithermal deposits. Your epithermal deposits are, are very common here in Nevada, which just means hot spring, shallow deposit. And because of that, the nature of the gold is usually gonna be electrum. That is something else. I, every time I see that, I get a kick out of looking at all this. All the ingenuity and, and the craftsmanship. I mean, just think of the logistics it would take to build something like this. Just monumental. And then drop shafts 3,000 feet down. Woo, we talk about a lot of lumber. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, you better smash that like button, boy. Smash it hard. Woo, or you're going to be dropping those pants. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams. And who? Some of the deepest holes you've ever seen. That's who. Saying you like hard rock mining history? Well, we do too. Follow our channel, boy, and you'll learn tons about AU. Take care, everybody. Ooh, look what I found. There's an opening. See that? Some kind of small drift. You can see the original timbering. It looks like there was a fire right there. You see that? Oh yeah. Looks like it comes through. You can see where the wood's been burned. Those are the original timbers too. Ooh, let's go take a look. Oh yeah, definitely a fire. Well, wow, see how the lagging is all split and cracked? Yeah, that's original right there. That's Comstock timbering. Oh, that's cool. You can see the electrical insulators running through there. Probably a service drift to get to the shaft. Oh, that is cool. I like that. It is cool. Slim, what you doing with her? I told you about that. <laughs>